Hi everyone, it's Junk Friends. We're bringing to you today a movie review for the Halloween Holiday Scarathon. But first, before we get to the review, I want to give a shout out to Phyllis Stokes. It was thanks to her and her husband that my mom really got into watching her that we've started making some smoothies. And it was really her husband, her and her husband's idea about putting peanut butter into a smoothie and this morning I made one a smoothie with some peanut butter in it and it tastes really really good so I want to give a shout out to her and make sure you go and check out her channel when you have the time now on to the review the movie that we're going to review today is warm bodies now warm bodies technically is not a scary movie Technically, it's not a scary movie. It's a paranormal romantic comedy. Now, many people will be wondering, why is a paranormal romantic comedy in your horror movie collection? Well, I put it in there because of it being a zombie flick. What Halloween is complete without zombies? Warm Bodies was made in 2013. 2013, and it's an adaptation of Isaac Marion's novel. The author makes several allusions to Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. Originally, the author wrote a short story titled I Am a Zombie Filled with Love, and the film tells the tale of a young woman and a zombie falling in love, and it's told from the zombie's perspective, which I find very interesting. And apparently there's a lot going on in a zombie's head more than just brains, brains, brains. Forgive my bad acting. The film stars uh, Nicholas Holt as R and Teresa Palmer as Julie Grigio. It also casts Rob Cordy as M, Dave Franco as Perry Kelvin, Anna Lee Tipton as Nora, Corey Hardrick is Kevin and John Malkovich is Colonel Grigio. Jonathan Levine serves as director. The movie was distributed by Summit M Entertainment and Lionsgate which have the distinct pleasure in my personal opinion of not being pile of poop entertainment or mount of poop entertainment. The film opens with us seeing the world of a zombie apocalypse through the eyes of the zombies. R. R can't remember anything of importance really from since he from the time that he became a zombie. All that he knows is that he's dead. The people around him are dead. He remembers his name began with R, thus his name R. And he knows he has a hoodie. Which he thinks probably made him unemployed while he was alive. Now if we just pause for a minute from the actual review, that's kind of classist and racist. A young white man in a hoodie being unemployed. Oh, the stereotypes. <clears throat> what he tries to do sometimes, so for fun, back to the review, is, or in getting back to the review, is to look at other zombies and guess what their former walk of life was. Like he saw a janitor. Janitor zombie trying to sweep the floor. There's a security guard zombie at the airport doing the little metal detector thing. Now the airport, we'll talk about that in a minute. R's greatest lament is that the world has lost its ability to express itself. The ability to communicate. The zombies no longer have that function. Now, he wishes that the world could return back to an earlier time. And he sees in some sort of a flashback, or he just pictures in his mind people on cell phones, people playing video, little kids playing video games. And what I find ironic, and it's very subtle, what I find ironic is that these are the very things that we 
talk about distancing our, you know, causing us to distance ourselves from each other. It's very interesting to think about. Now we quickly see that there are two types of zombies. There are your regular zombies that retain a spark of humanity and they still somewhat look human except they're very pale and cold and so forth like that. But then you have the bonies. They're basically walking skeletons. Now our comments about the bonies how that they will quote eat anything with a heartbeat end quote. Now, what I find funny is that the bonies just always look like crackheads to me. Now, there's no significance, really, of, their, of it taking place at an airport, of or living in an airport, that I can tell, other than it serves as ours home and somewhat base of operations. We find out about R that not only is he a zombie, but he's a hoarder. He is a hoarder zombie. And on the plane that he goes to, for lack of a better term, live, where he relaxes and does zombie stuff, he has all sorts of old junk lying around. He has a bobblehead cat. He has old records. He has books. He has all sorts of stuff that he's collected. And speaking of irony... Our channel is called Junk Rins, and R collects a lot of junk. Hmm. Seriously, I didn't even remember. I've seen the movie before, but I didn't remember that he collected junk until I went back to watch it for the review. I just kind of interesting if you think about it. Anyway, R meets up with M. They decide to go to the city to grab a tasty brain burger. That is a tasty burger. <laughs> Leading us to pan over to the city within the movie where we see the probably the last human fortification on Earth. May or may not be. We don't know. We just know it's a human fortification. We find the people there surviving. In one scene, a woman is walking some goats. But we come across a group of young men and women, brave young souls, going to venture out to the world of the dead to essentially, what it is, loot, to collect supplies. Medical supplies within the movie, but they're going out to collect supplies. They exit the city and we see a sign that says, Welcome to the Dead Zone. Look alive out there. Kind of corny, but kind of cool. Anyway, the, this group goes to this old medical facility or like Walgreens or, you know, department store or whatever it is. They go to a place where there's medicine and the group of zombies that's going to the city to get something, get uh, some of those tasty brain burgers, they smell the group. Now, what's interesting about it is that zombies actually, in this movie, they operate off a sense of smell. They can smell the living. Anyway, they smell this group, and they go into the thing, in, into the building, and they attack the people. They attack them. And it is at this time that R sees Julie. And we have our first Romeo and Juliet illusion. Romeo and Juliet, R and Julie, R and J, together forever. Kind of corny, but I kind of like the way it pays homage to the works of William Shakespeare. It pays homage to Romeo and Juliet. And it's always good to pay homage to the work that you borrow from. Now, we find out that if a zombie doesn't eat your brain then you come back as a zombie but if they do then the zombie gains your memories gains your thoughts of course as R said as R says the brain's the best part 
It's the part that makes me feel human again. After killing Julie's boyfriend, R eats his brains, gains his memories and his feelings for Julie, and he suddenly develops a strong sense of protectiveness about her. He wants to protect her. And he even goes so far as to smear some of his own blood on her face to give her a cover scent from zombies. So she, he does that several times in the film while that she's cornered. But anyway, he takes her back to his plane where he's showing her his junk and no, that is not a nasty reference. I know what some of y'all are thinking. Naughty. Naughty. Shame on you. Shame on you for thinking that. He shows He's showing her the music and books and stuff that he's collected. Of course, she tries to get away a couple times, gets cornered by zombies, and of course he tells her it's not safe, and so that she needs to lay low for a little while and hide out for a couple of days to hide from these zombies. Well, apparently... I didn't know that laying low and hiding out would involve driving a sports car around the tarmac. But, anyway, it is what it is. They don't just drive a sports car, though. They listen to music, they dance, they chat, they get to know each other a little bit better. And, of course, on their way out, They get cornered by some bonies. Where R's friend M comes to the rescue and slams into them while driving uh, one of those little airport cars that they carry the luggage on. I don't know what they're called, but he drives one of them and slams into the bonies. Helps them to escape. And they make their way to the city. And on the way there... R and Julie break into an abandoned house where that they try to spend the night. Moved by the connection of R and Julie, M and the other zombies start to feel things. Earlier in the film, when R is showing his collection of junk to Julie, he and he eats some of the brains that he has stored away of her ex-boyfriend, her now dead boyfriend. What happens is he gains feelings, and his heart actually we it pan, the camera pans into his chest, and his dead heart goes. It starts to beat, but it beats one time. Now these other zombies, they're they're moved by the connection that R and Julie share and they see a picture of a couple holding hands and their heart goes a beat. Well anyway the bonies take notice they can smell the beating heart and so they chase him and the other zombies out of the city. Speaking of getting the memories and one scene R eats some of the brains from Julie's ex-boyfriend and he gains the memory of seeing him attack Perry and kill him and he, at the point at that point he spits the brains out and gets a look on his face like this is what I've been doing this is horrible well moving on The thing that's really cool about this film is the way that the zombies begin to progressively look less and less like zombies and more and more like humans. They start to show more expression in their faces. They, the paleness starts to go away. They start to look more alive. And it is R and Julie being the catalyst for this change and it causes the bonies to want to go after them and to attack them, to kill them. And so after Julie has 
gotten away from R, and R then makes his way to the city, and he does this in order to tell Julie, yeah, we're changing. The zombies are changing. And so, he also is trying to warn her about the bonies as well. I'm not going to spoil the ending for you, but I will tell you this. There is a battle between the humans, the bonies, and the zombies being involved. And so, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting if you go back and watch it to find out what happens. As far as this movie goes for Halloween, I recommend it. I give it four out of five stars, and this is why. The acting is really good for a modern movie. There's not a whole lot of dialogue between R and Julie. I mean, there is a lot of dialogue on her part, but he had to really act out his role and express himself through his emotions rather than through words and that is always refreshing to see and a, another thing that's really interesting is it's told from the zombies perspective like I mentioned earlier but then this is also less of a movie about the zombie apocalypse which we have so much of today but it's of the zombie apocalypse starting to end it's like we always see the zombie apocalypse happen and the world descend into chaos. And this is like the world trying to restore order once again. So th I find that really interesting. The story itself, while a weird retelling of Romeo and Juliet, it is still fresh. They found a way to make it seem fresh. Like it's not overdone. I'm not a fan of romance movies, but this one was actually not just not only watchable, but it was enjoyable. I like this movie. I like it. It's really good, and I encourage anybody to go and buy it, rent it, see it, watch it this Halloween. The only thing that, uh, I mean, in comedy, it has a lot of comedy to it, so it does really really good the way that I just the, the one area that I feel that it's weak in is the way that it doesn't have a whole lot of action to it and the way that Julie's dad seems to be a bit of a hard nose now understandably so so, I mean, I, I can't be too hard on the guy. But, you know, over, over, overall, the movie is just, it's, it's good. Well, this is our review, our Junk Rins review of Warm Bodies. I hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like it, share it. And if you like our other videos, don't forget to subscribe and share our channel out. And if you want to communicate with us, you can get, drop us a line at uh, facebook.com forward slash junkrins. And of course, and then we have our YouTube page, youtube.com forward slash junkrins. This is Junkrins. Halloween Holiday Scaring Bond 2014. I don't know the next movie that we're going to watch. I'm, I'm going to have to see. It, it might be Sleepy Hollow. It might be uh, The Evil Dead. I'm just going to have to see because I, I'm enjoying Halloween. I really am. I'm enjoying going back watching these movies and really being able to show y'all what I like. Well, this is Junk Rins signing out.